Okay guys, I want to show you some of the uh, features of this new tool I got here. It's a CRP uh, 129E from Launch. I, I'm really enjoying this tool. It has some limitations given the fact that it's meant to be kind of a secondary tool or a DIY tool. It's not a primary use tool for most shops. This is not going to be a professional's go-to tool. This is going to be uh, great for getting codes out, doing pre-scan and post-scan on a vehicle, uh, letting you letting you know uh, what the data parameters look like. It's got some enhanced OBDD, OBD2 um, data PIDs in there, so you're going to get a lot more information than a basic code reader uh, by far. So it's got an automatic detect function. Some of the other videos on this, you'll already see that. Well, I'll just do a quick uh, go through like I'm basically like I normally would to see this vehicle. Show you the, and I'm going to go ahead and let it, it'll automatically search and then it'll self populate some of these, uh, these menus so you can go ahead and just click through them basically. Right now we're working on, I believe this is a 2008 or 2010 Toyota Matrix. Uh, so we'll let it do the communications here. I will say I've got a launch Dagon 4 and its ability to communicate and find a VIN code for you uh, and auto populate the VIN code and then decode that has been great. That has uh, rare, very rarely has it failed me. Uh, even going back into the late 90s of vehicles, it has uh, it has excellent ability to uh, pull up VIN codes and uh, decode those so that you're getting into the vehicle a whole lot quicker. 2006. I prefer to do this this way. Um, the reason being is because the other way takes me through uh, a complete scan of all the modules that this will talk to, not all the modules on the vehicle, but all the ones that this one will go through. You can still do that health report here. Um, you can look at basic basic stuff here. It's giving me just some warning, some information as we go along here. So we'll let it communicate basically we're going to have main functions here. This is where the limitations of this tool are that it does not have bi-directional controls so you're not going to do um, test fuel pumps, you're not going to test um, window motors or uh, vacuum switching valves, you're not going to you're not going to change, do a lot of those tests in the same way that you would with a more expensive launch tool uh, but this is in the $230 range without any discounts, without any coupon codes or anything like that. So it is much more affordable. And this, I believe, is meant for more of a DIY. This is also meant for maybe a second or a backup scan tool that you could use in the shop. Uh, hey, I had one a, a thing the other day where I was busy with my main scan tool, my Diagon 4, and I uh, had a guy that needed to get some work done on a different vehicle and I just handed him this and said here go get the codes of it see what we've got and he was able to give me some answers so that I didn't have to do everything on that vehicle so the data stream on this you're going to have enhanced OBD2 diagnostics on this as far as the uh, number of PIDs that you're going to have it's pretty impressive um, I believe this is very much equal to what you're going to find in even the more expensive uh, launch scan tools. So this will look, this is from different vehicles, uh, like I'm working also on a, a Chevy right over here, and that Chevy has it all organized in a different way. It has it organized, uh, and if you're familiar with scan tools, uh, it'll you pop into a Chevy and it'll say engine, uh, EVAP, misfire, TAC, all of those different categories and then they'll have PIDs related to that. This one you're going to scroll through and a lot of the ones you're going to find uh, other than Chevy and eh, maybe some Ford uh, you're going to find uh, you'll just scan through. And I, When I first got started with launch I kind of didn't like that but actually now that I've 
have had it for a little bit, it allows me to get just a few uh, PIDs on the screen and then basically change my uh, change my refresh rate because I'm not having to populate a whole lot of stuff on the screen. One thing I really like about this uh, scan tool is the fact that you can very easily graph and the graphing on this is pretty cool. Let's see if I can pull this up quickly. There we go. Uh, another thing I've noticed on this when you get a lot of a lot of time on the screen you can get more time on the screen and you can zoom in on this or zoom out on that sometimes that's going to be helpful in seeing the relationship of O2 sensors how are they switching over time has it been uh, maybe I left this to answer the phone and came back and has it been dead the whole time so I can I can scrunch my data up and look at a lot more time that uh, has elapsed and that way I can look at several things at one time and not have to flip back and forth. Now, as far as I can tell, you're going to be limited to combining a couple things at one time on this, so it's not something where you can you can put, like on a um, bigger scan tool, you're going to be able to put four and five things on the, on the scan tool, but again, you're going to be able to find, this is meant for somebody who's mainly I would think looking for one particular thing at a time, right? They're going to be looking at, hey, is this oxygen sensor moving? Is the uh, vent valve showing open or closed when it's when it's supposed to be on? Uh, what's my duty cycle on that fan showing? That kind of stuff. You're not going to be doing hardcore diagnostics with this. But let me show you let me back up some of the other features that I like about this. It's showing that it will do. Um, it monitors battery voltage. I saw another reviewer, and I, and I agree. This is not a super accurate, this is not a extremely accurate readout. I don't have an actual readout up here to tell me 13.4 volts, something to that effect. I, I'm having to work off of what I see. <laughs> Technically, what I'm seeing here is not really looking also, oh so great, but eh, we're not pushing 14, but we're not down here at 12 either it would really be nice to have a number. So, uh, resets, uh, throttle body resets, uh, oil resets. I've used this already and even the ones where it won't give you a, a reset through the tool, it will give you instructions. So there's plenty of times where working on a Volvo, working on a, a Volkswagen, whatever, and you're not familiar with that. So you need, a, you need some directions and it may be quicker to go through here than to go try and find that information and all that, uh, just find it on the web somewhere. There's a lot of videos and stuff out there, but you, if you've been looking, you know that some of them are pretty crappy as far as what, what's out there. It's supposed to do electronic throttle relearn, uh, steering angle reset, uh, brake reset for doing uh, rear brakes where it's got the electronic parking brakes. So, uh, TPMS reset, I'm not sure on what that will do. That is one where I want to play around with that and see what it what it will do there. I don't know if that's uh, resetting the TPMS system. Uh, I know this has this doesn't have any of the uh, hardware to do to program sensors or anything like that. So that's not going to be the case. Uh, one cool setting that I found here that I thought was interesting. You can if you don't like their set up on their uh, on their uh, automatic detection as soon as you turn it on you can easily turn that off so you can flip in here and turn that off the uh, it's got some screen brightness so if you're working in direct sun you can work with that uh, you can turn it right up oh come on there we go it's trying to do it through the viewfinder there so I'm not a big fan of that I may turn that off but at this point and you can flip and flop here. Uh, easy setup on the Bluetooth, on the, the Bluetooth, on the Wi-Fi. That was very easy. Uh, email was real easy. Basically setting this tool up took me just a very short amount of time and it was very intuitive. No, no big deal there. Uh, this should give me, yeah, this should give me uh, monitor readiness on all the monitors for the vehicle. Let me know what all monitors have run for this car. 
So this will be happy handy for when you're finishing. Uh, well, see if I did something wrong there. Uh, this should be handy for verifying that a repair has been done, so that you know the monitor has been run. You know that the uh, let me pay attention here, so that you know when you're done that hey, monitor's done, and I don't have a code come back. So that would be quite handy for that. Let's see what it says here. Ah, there we go. So the ones that are completed, not ready. Okay, so the if we had worked on an EVAP code, then we would not expect we we would expect that to possibly come back because this is not green yet. So that's kind of handy. Uh, that is definitely something where in the fact that you can actually add that as a report, that's pretty cool. So uh, send that out to the customer. It's basically a, a great that to me is a great cover uh, cover your butt tool. Just one of those things where you don't want it coming back on you so it's really good to uh to go through and and you know basically make sure that you've covered all the bases let's see real quick uh the update process on this it's pretty easy uh it's basically you just highlight what you want to update and then update it i know my other tool came with two years of free updates i'll have to do some looking to see if this also does that um let me just talk about real quickly on the form form factor uh, I don't know if you like or don't like the plug-in scan tools actually I kind of prefer this just because when the school the, the tools out of the car my plug-ins out of the car the one that I've got with a dongle is always a question about is my tool in the dongle in the, are they both on my toolbox or is one of them in the car uh, the form for this I don't have tiny hands I don't have big hands just moderate and it's got excellent little uh, grips here on the back so if you're carrying this around the shop not going to fall out of your hands it does have some nice uh, hard plastic bumpers here this is not this is not the kind of plastic that would easily chip and break so this i like this material here uh, it's got somewhere because you're you're going to be grabbing this or holding on to this um, so as far as form fitting yeah it's awesome uh, the battery on this it's been fantastic I left this thing on uh, just in standby mode uh, just in that mode right there and I left it for oh, a couple days came back and I was sure that it was going to be way down and sure enough I opened it up and it was sitting at like 97% so it was looking great um, Oh, uh, another really cool function for this uh, tool is that it will record data so if you're say you you've picked up several PIDs and you want to take it for a test drive and you can't you don't have anybody else that can watch it uh, the safest thing for you to do is going to be to record that and then you can play that back at a later date so having that function just is going to make you safer it's also going to give you something to again show your customers so you can do a record before recording and an after recording and show them look this is how it responded before see that oxygen sensor was totally dead and then when I got done here's my after recording so it's just one more tool in the arsenal here again this is a $230 tool I got it even cheaper than that with some discounts uh, this is this is well worth your money this is a uh, this is definitely in the in the in the launch scan tool um, setup lineup here. This to me fits really well, especially for somebody who doesn't want uh, the full fledged two thousand dollar tool. They don't want the um, they don't want the Diagon Four, which is in the five hundred five hundred to seven hundred range, really depending on the popularity of the tool and the uh, the discounts that you can apply. Um, I definitely recommend this. The uh, the software that you're going to find in here is is quite good. Um, it certainly provides good information. You're you're just not getting your bidirectional controls. And while that is a bit of a downer at the price point that we're at, hey, you're getting a whole lot for this for that kind of money. So, guys, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the uh, description box below. But I think this is a really good tool for the right person, certainly, uh, but the CRP129E, uh, let me know what you think.